This is so funny. <laughs> I just, I just stopped our previous video from yesterday. Sat back down, and now we're gonna film this video. Same outfit, same position. Vlogmas. This is what it takes to do a video a day. You just gotta film when you have time. Yes. So today's video is like interesting, though. Yeah. Even though we're filming two in a row, um, we're using a question that I get asked all the time when I do my talks for elementary schools, mm -hmm. which, if you don't know, is a part of the work I do with Laughing at My Nightmare. I talk to kids about being disabled, being different, and why it's not a bad thing. And those are free, right? So those schools? are free. So if you're an elementary or middle school teacher and you would like to bring me to your class virtually, uh, get a laughing at my number to come and check that out. Anyway, question is, what does it feel like to be disabled? so much to ButcherBox for sponsoring this video. Yeah, thanks to ButcherBox. We were able to give Hannah's dad one of the best holiday gifts of his life. Mm -hmm. ButcherBox is a meat subscription box that was started by a guy named Mike who couldn't find high quality meat for his family. They carry 100% grass-fed and pasture-raised beef, free-range and organic chicken, heritage breed pork, and wild-caught salmon. Meat! Sorry, I just wanted to do that. New members will get $10 off your first box and free bacon for life. That's a free pack of bacon in every box for the lifetime of your subscription. Plus, shipping is always free. You can choose from either a curated meat box or customize your own box and choose from two different size options. You can also choose the frequency of your delivery, either every two weeks or every month or every two months. And there are perks to being a subscriber, like free shipping and recipes and exclusive deals and more. The meat arrives frozen in a insulated box, so all you gotta do, take it out, pop it in your freezer, you're good to go. It's super convenient no matter where you live, and this is a fantastic deal for premium cuts of meat. Hannah's mom sent us a video of George opening his meat. I've never seen his face light up this excitedly. <laughs> he is the happiest person in the world right now. Yeah, we got him some ribeyes, a chuck roast, a couple of other things that we knew he would love, and I think we nailed it. I think this is going to be like three or four days till he's done with all of it. <laughs> this is going to be every meal for him from now on. <laughs> Again, new members will get $10 off your first box and free bacon for life, which is a pack of bacon in every box for the length of your subscription. Plus, shipping is always free. Thank you. Thanks. All right, so the question is, what does it feel like to be disabled? Or like, what does it feel like to use a wheelchair? What does it feel like to not be able to walk? There's yeah. like a bunch of variations, but just in general, what does it feel like to have a disability? Yes, so before we begin, important caveat. This is my perspective as someone that's lived with a disability their entire life, who's used a wheelchair their entire life. If you ask 100 disabled people, what does it feel like to be disabled? you would get a hundred different answers. Yeah. So this is my perspective, not an answer that represents the entire community. Yeah. Although I think the basic point that we're going to make is one that most would agree with. Yeah, and... Yeah, and... Are you kidding? Dude. Chloe She's just burped in my face. <laughs> Come on, in your crate. So yeah, this is just Shane's perspective as someone who has used a wheelchair since he was two. I'm just giving a little background info. Um, I, every time I think about that, a little two-year-old baby driving a full electric wheelchair, I have, like, nightmares for my parents. You know, <laughs> Can like, you imagine? And, and didn't your daycare teacher say that your favorite activity was to go full speed into the walls? Yep, I just like to hit into stuff. So <laughs> this is the perspective that you're getting today. But uh, Shane's disease is also progressive, or at least it was until he was, like, 25 and began, you know, treatments. So... Um, another, that's another thing to keep in mind. I think yeah. everybody's perspective is different, but Shane's disability, while he's had it his whole life, is a lot different now than it was when he was 5 or yeah. 10 or 15. Yeah. So when kids ask me any variation of what it's like to be disabled, here's the answer that I give them, and then we'll go a little bit deeper, because I obviously don't tell the 5-year-olds the whole picture. <laughs> um, what I say to them is, what if I asked you, what does it feel like to walk? Or what does it feel like to not be disabled? You would probably say, uh, let's see, I wake up and I go to the bathroom 
and then I go downstairs and I eat breakfast and then I go to school and I play with my friends and I do work. It's hard to describe what it feels like to be who we are. You know, you say the things that you do, and it's the same way for me. Being disabled doesn't feel like anything. I'm not in pain, um, and that's, you know, another, uh, it's my perspective. I don't live with pain. Um, I can't feel the fact that my legs don't really move. Um, I just go about my day. I get lifted into my wheelchair. I brush my teeth, I drink my coffee, I work on my computer, I do everything that you do walking, but I do it sitting down. So it's not really like something that I'm mentally aware of in my day-to-day -day life. Yeah, I think the idea that you're just not really mentally aware of it is is the biggest thing. And I think it also goes for like Shane's disability in our relationship. You know, people will be like, what's it like to be with a disabled yeah. person? Like, it's the same thing. We don't think about it. I don't think about it. I mean, it's obviously, it's not like Shane's disability is not a part of our relationship. You yeah. know, people will be like, she saw past his disability and that's not it at all. No. I mean, like Shane is obviously disabled and his disability is a big part of our relationship, but it's such a big part that like, we don't think about it. You know, yeah. it's like saying like, what does it feel like to be with Hannah because she's tall? Uh -huh. Like, obviously, I can reach things on higher shelves. You know, obviously, I, you know, I have to look down to talk to me. Obviously, yeah, I'm, I'm like, I have to look down she's to talk to you. She's out of her. Oh my god, she came out of her crate. Chloe, we had her in our crate for the filming, and she's now out somehow. Well, I leave it. I leave it unzipped in case of a fire. A she tiny just, bit. Yeah. She tends to stay in. Oh my god, what a bad. I think dog. she just went back in. <laughs> She came out here to just be. So you know, she came out to be like, "Hey, idiots!" Just so you know, I can get out, but I'm gonna go back in now. Like, what is it like to look up at her when she's sitting in front of you and talking to you? Right? Like, it's things that you don't even notice. Yeah, you know. And, and I don't. And I'm not aware. I mean, I'm aware, but I'm not thinking about the fact that I'm sitting while I'm moving from the living room to the kitchen. Yeah, it's just the way I do things. The way I've been doing them forever. I use wheels to move instead of my feet. Um, so that is part of it. That's what I tell the kids. Like, being disabled is, you know, different in that I use a wheelchair, but it's not like a big negative thing that I'm thinking about or, like, sad about. With that being said, there are systemic issues that I face as a disabled person that definitely color my experience. So... Those are a part of it as well because there are things that I need to be aware of at different points in my life. I think the moments that Shane is most frustrated uh, about like using a wheelchair is when we're out in public and there are buildings that are not accessible. Um, yeah. Or when he can't just easily get onto the airplane because they won't allow his wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Like he is, when we're home, he doesn't think about it because everything is accessible to him. I mean, not our bathroom, not our sink, but like, you know, he, his normal daily routine isn't interrupted by inaccessibility. Yeah. So I think the moments when his disability comes to the forefront in our relationship and just in his life is when there is inaccessibility, you know? Yeah, and, and not just environmental, but like when I have healthcare issues mm -hmm. like when i have to fight with my insurance that is when my disability is at like the forefront of my mind and i'm mad not that i'm disabled but that the care systems that are in place in our country are so difficult to navigate that i have to make a thousand phone calls yeah um so it's not hey i'm like oh man i'm disabled now i'm annoyed like I'm like, oh, insurance sucks. Yeah, and when we're out in public and there's an inaccessible building, you're not like, oh, I wish I wasn't disabled. You're like, yeah. why don't they put a ramp in? Exactly. You know, it's never, it's never like Shane internalizes that. Another time that Shane's disability comes to the forefront is when strangers come up to us and, you know, pray over him or ask me if he wants the children's menu or, you know, if my son is having a nice day at the park. <sighs> You know, various, various things that they might say. That or if are... they comment on our YouTube. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, he's the ugliest person I've ever seen. Why would she date someone so disabled? Yeah. It's that social misunderstanding and stigma that surrounds disability that reminds me, like, oh, people do look at me 
very differently. And that can be frustrating. But again, I don't think that that's a problem with me. It's their misunderstanding and ignorance about disability. So, you know, that's a lot to explain to children, but... So yeah, I think, you know, similar questions might be like, what does it feel like to be named Hannah? (laughs) Or what does it feel like to be 25? Or like when people say, what does it feel like to be married? Yeah. You know, it's things that are really difficult. You know, I don't know what it feels like to be named Hannah. Like that's just my name. It's just what you've always been. Yeah. yeah. It's normal. You that's... know, it's it's that kind of a thing where you're just like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. And so, I, you know, explaining it to children is a little difficult. That's why I simplify it for them. Because disability, obviously, is a huge part of my identity. Like it affects so much in my life and in the world with inaccessibility and the stigma that I face because of my disability. But in my day-to-day life, I don't like feel physically my disability. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like, I, I know I'm disabled and I, I am proud of that, but like, we have the adaptations in place for my daily life that I'm not like, ah, disability, there it is, I feel <laughs> it. It's not like a Tyndall. You know, or like a, a thing that, you know, I, I get a feeling in my stomach where mm-hmm. I'm like, there's the disability again. That's my, that's just my perspective. Yeah. Um, not something that I am very consciously aware of until I'm facing a barrier, like inaccessibility or an insurance rep telling me that the procedure that I need is not approved, mm-hmm. something like that. And I think when people say, like, what does it feel like to not be able to move your arms? Uh-huh. You know, it's just like... Oh, I can move my arms. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's not like you're straining to, like, reach the light switch. You know, yeah, like, you're yeah. just... It's like, what does it feel like to not be able to fly? You know, yeah. like, it's not... You don't try to fly, you know? Like, you're not constantly like, oh, I'm trying to stand. <sighs> you know, it's just like you live within your uh-huh. own body, and it's yeah. just, It's hard to explain, right? Like... Like, me lifting my arm to my max height right here probably feels... Like this. Like what Ham is doing. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not like... Same feeling. Yeah. I'm not... This isn't tiring. Yeah. It's not tiring. I don't, I'm not hurting myself. Like, you know? But you're not also not like, oh, I'm, like, trying to go higher. You're yeah. not expecting to go higher. It's so, it's... Yeah, I think kids are often like, what does it feel like to not be able to stand up? And it's just like, you know... If I tried, I would crumple into a little ball. So I don't. <laughs> That's not what I tell them. I, I promise my presentations are very appropriate. And <laughs> Age appropriate. I don't tell the children that I crumple into a ball every time I try to walk. Oh, I try every day, kids. <laughs> it's just not worth it. All right. That's oh, the yeah. end. Yeah, hopefully that makes sense. It's definitely, we're talking about like a very nebulous subject, yeah. so it's hard to to pin down, but hopefully that answers some questions. Yeah, I think that, most simply put, what does it feel like to be you? If you can figure out that, that's what it feels like to be me. Uh, <laughs> it's just, I sit down instead of stand most of the time. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Bye.